Welcome back to season 12 of the Neuroscience Meets Social and Emotional Learning Podcast, where we connect the science-based evidence behind social and emotional learning and emotional intelligence training for improved well-being, achievement, productivity, and results using what I saw as the missing link. Since we weren't taught this when we were growing up in school, the application of practical neuroscience. I'm Andrea Samadhi, an author and an educator with a passion for learning, and launched this podcast six years ago with the goal of bringing all the leading experts together in one place to help us to apply this research in our daily lives. On today's episode, number 341, we welcome Pam Buchanan. She's the founder of Quantum Sense, a consulting agency for the new paradigm, something we talk about often on this podcast. After Pam took an introspective look at how she was able to perform throughout her career, which required her to be able to keep up with the pace of Silicon Valley, she accredited her success to more than physical and mental health. She began what would be over a decade of research and self-examination to eventually define this as soul health. Throughout her personal and professional life, Pam has a long history at being at the forefront of innovation. She was among the first to bring mutual funds to the banking industry in the 80s, and she identified unicorn startups to take to the public markets. Prior to starting Quantum Sense, Pam served as a managing director at NASDAQ for 15 years and was responsible for identifying, building, and maintaining relationships with pre IPO companies, founders, C level executives, venture capital, and private equity firms. It's in this role where she was in the boardrooms with minds of some of the world's greatest innovators, including Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. Pam understands how the corporate mindset has evolved over the past few decades, and it's ready to lead the next evolution through soul health. Now as the founder of Quantum Sense, Pam is drawing from her wide ranging experience and ability to distill and convey complex concepts to bring soul health to the masses. She's developed programs and services designed for companies proven to help their employees reduce anxiety, increase energy, create focus, boost creativity, and ultimately improve their overall satisfaction in the office and in life. If you look at the direction our podcast is taking, you'll see that while I'm always looking for ways to connect the most current brain research to improve our productivity and results, I'm also extremely wide open to what else is out there. What else could we be thinking and doing that might be a paradigm shift from our old ways of thinking in the workplace, but ways that will be necessary for us to all reach these higher levels of achievement, ways to understand and improve our own soul health. Let's meet Pam Buchanan and learn more about the fascinating intersection that she's discovered with neuroscience and corporate innovation through the lens of soul health. Welcome, Pam. You have no idea, Pam, how timely it is that we're meeting today. I've been diving into this topic recently. I was just interviewed last week from someone who focuses on this topic, and this is an area of interest for me right now. So welcome. It's an honor to have you on the podcast today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Wonderful. Well, Pam, when I looked at your background, which is impressive, it just reminded me of my mom. She spent years in the financial industry in Canada in life insurance. When Mm -hmm. her heart really was in education, a lot of us in, in the family, we ended up being teachers. But she ended up making money, but ultimately she wasn't living her sole purpose for her career And just over the years, we watched her health decline. She 
you know, had cancer and it was impossible for me to miss that something was off with, you know, the daily stress that she had to go through in the corporate world. So can you share what led you to go from the fast paced boardroom, working with some of the greats like Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg to helping others improve their soul health? Where did this start for you? Yeah, I, I think it started pretty early on in my career, you know, when I started back in the 80s. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted something more. I, I was excited about being a businesswoman. Um, but as you know, um, you know, being in the fast paced world of finance and technology does take its toll. And especially when, you know, again, as I said, I started back in the 80s when they're, you know, the women were just starting to enter the workforce, the business workforce, if you will, you know, full speed. And uh, obviously challenges just integrating and, and you know, trying to make your stake, if you will, in the male dominated fields uh, that I entered. And, you know, there was just something that, um, you know, maybe it was creativity, maybe it was, um, you know, uh, other things that were stirring inside me. But I thought, you know, why don't I, you know, want to develop myself along with my career and how can I be more effective in my career? And and I don't want to use the word compete, but, you know, it was very competitive. Right. Sure. Um, so I needed to be healthy, not only just physically and mentally, but also, you know, uh, in other ways, there was something missing. So that's when I started exploring, you know, books that were written by Deepak Chopra and, and Wayne Dwyer and, and others in the field and looking um, at it from a different perspective. And it really grounded me, if you will, uh, as I, um, you know, navigated my career. And, you know, uh, thank you. You know, it, it was a successful career and, and you know, it was very, very exciting and and fulfilling in many, many ways. But um, it was obviously very, very draining as well. And in terms of not just time and and um, but primarily energy, um, you know, I was just tired all the time, <laughs> which maybe that's the you know, our, our entire universe is tired. <laughs> We're exhausted at this point. This is so interesting because the main thing that I was told after my conversation with that fellow that his whole podcast is based on, you know, consciousness and energy. Um, he yeah. asked me at the end of the day, how are, how's your energy level? And I said, I'm tired at, by three o'clock. And, mm -hmm. and I, I know that's not the right answer. I'm supposed to say, well, I tap into all these resources. And I, at the end of the day, I don't need sugar or, or a cup of coffee. I, I've got it covered, but I don't. So mm -hmm. he picked that up. He said, I can see it in your aura. And so then off I go to get my aura read because in, in Phoenix, you can do that anywhere. There's lots yes. of places, right, for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, what am I not mm -hmm. doing? Because mm -hmm. I only know how to tap into my energy through exercise. That's the, mm -hmm. the main way. Mm -hmm. But but you can overdo that and still, and, yeah. and you're walking around hurt. So I'm just curious. Um, I know that that I've learned about some of the tools, but but when you were tired and you noticed you needed help from a soul perspective, did you have tools or what did you do to end the day with high energy? Well, I, you know, that was, that's a lifelong goal, right? I don't think <laughs> I mastered it um, okay. really in my 40 year career, you know, because it was so fast paced. Right. And I just was focused on activity, 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 and then you crashed. Yeah. So I think, as you said, it's just now we're awakening up and saying there's got to be more because at the end of the day, um, physically and mentally tired, we, we know those terms very well, right. but it's really our soul that is exhausted, right? Like, and, and that's what needs replenishing. And that's what I talk to corporations about is that, you know, they have programs on the, for the physical body, right? That's exercise, you know, gym memberships and um, classes on nutrition and, you know, just a ton of resources out there that they can provide their employees. And then now, thankfully, you know, mental health is at the forefront, right? So you have, there's always been the term mental health day and, and taking a break. And, you know, now there's access to, to mental health professionals and um, types of meditation and, and other things that can, you know, you know, get, 
get you mentally prepared, um, you know, for the day. But what about soul? What about soul health? And, you know, we're, we're, we're physical body, we're mental body, but most importantly, it is our soul. And, and what is our knowing in that soul? And I think society has been structured that we don't focus on that part of our being because our being has three parts. Again, mind, body, and soul. And so let's get that into the daily um, language, if you will, of talking. When I say, hey, how was your day? You know, oh, you worked out great. And oh, I took a mental break. And, uh, you know, even meditation, the word meditation and some of these other words are coming to the forefront, but no one embraces soul. And I think that's because we associate it with the spiritual world. Uh, let's call it religion. And, you know, I don't want to be so blunt as to say, you know, religion took that part away or the organization of religion. You know, we gave that over to that um, institution, if you will. And, you know, uh, religion plays a part in it, um, you know, going to practice and um, be with your community um, and, and talk about, you know, the higher being. But the soul is still a part of you. It's not owned by anybody else but you so why can't we talk about it just as we talk about our body you know your body is yours no one uh, really would deny that so um your soul is yours as well and each soul is different right each soul it, it, it it's the same in the its essence of love so it's all love and joy and brightness and light um, but again, and once we tap into that, we, we can really feel it. But again, we're not consciously tapping into that part of our being. So let's start to consciously do that just like we would get up, have our morning breakfast, you know, um, work out if you if you if that's part of your daily routine, but incorporate some soul giving activities into that. And that's really, you know, it could be two minutes, it could be an hour where you focus in on your soul, but let's just have it be part of your daily conversation. I love it. I love it. And because we've been focusing on this podcast on our top health staples, you know, we all know about yep. sleep and exercise. Yep. We, we've done that. And then definitely mental health came in around the pandemic time, you know, that yep was obvious anxiety, depression. We can talk about these things, but I remember so clearly when I tried to bring in um, like a strategy to the corporate world and it was over 10 years ago. So it was, it was a long while ago, but it was tapping for, you know, energy release. And mm -hmm. it, it was on television. And one of the sales managers says, you know, a Andrea, do you know about this tapping? And I said, yeah, I've actually been using this since early 2000 just to, keep everything centered. That's how I said it. So I go up against my sales team and I t talk about how this releases any stress. And, and I'm telling you, no one said a word. They just looked at me and it was awful. It didn't go over well. And, and I'm sure they all still look at me and think I'm this crazy um, nutcase with, with the spiritual stuff, but it's the, it's the center of who I am. I just learned that and not everyone embraces it. So I just wonder what it was for you where you, you noticed that there was this missing piece that you needed to unlock this energy. And how did you start to bring it in? H have you been where I have, where you're talking to a room in a corporate situation and they look at you like, what, what are you talking about? Do you know what I mean? You know, I, 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 I want to say I kept some of those to myself. Like I didn't talk to, let's say, a room full of people um, individually. I may have tapped into a knowing. So I think it was I tapped. I, I see people's energy first before I see their physical being or their uh, mental state, if you will. I can tap into, quote unquote, the aura. Okay. So can, can let's I ask, can, can you yep. see colors? Or how do you know I, I, I cannot see color. So I'm not an expert. And, in, in, you know, you wouldn't come to me to, to tap into like, oh, I'm going to visualize and, and paint you and, and, and show you all the different colors and what they mean. Like what your aura, is it cloudy? Is it bright? Is it, right. you know, where, right. where you're 
chakra is aligned, where aren't they aligned? That's all very important. What I want to do is bring all of the resources together. Just like you go to your uh, primary doctor for certain things, he brings everything together. He gives you a full blood profile. Your mental health professional should be doing that too with your mental health. Who is doing that for your soul health? And that does include, let's say, an aura professional. Let's say, you know, uh, people that, um, you know, can tap into, um, you know, the different tools that maybe tap into the chakra and the energetic system more directly than just nutrition and food, you know, and, and they become, again, normal. Just like, um, you know, back in the 90s, I was doing cupping, right? Like, you know, to relieve my body pain. So I was in a snowmobile accident and, you know, the pain and the, and, you know, it was the, um, it wasn't the muscle tension. It was the the tissues between the muscles. And, you know, no one knew uh, what cupping was really other than the, the Western or the Eastern medicine professionals. Right. So then, in fact, I, I got some cupping done just a, a couple of months ago. And um, and the woman said, um, oh, I, I've never met anyone, um, you know, of your age that had been has been doing cupping for that long you know like she goes you've known about this and you know i'm i'm not obviously of that authenticity right like from i don't come from the eastern culture so she was just very very surprised that i would have known about it for so long but it, but now if i say oh i'm going to go get cupping people know about it right so i think it just takes time for things to come to the, you know, the masses, if you will. So I want to be ahead of soul health. I think it will be, I don't want to use the word, but I will trending at some point where, oh yes, let's talk about the soul health. Maybe, maybe we will be going to a, a professional person that goes, okay, let's do a quick assessment of your physical health. Let's do a quick assessment of your, of your mental health and also of your soul health. Here are the tools that, that that you can use to access that. And yes, is is it's all scientifically back. We're all energy, right? That's all we are. That's what I truly, truly believe is that you know we're energy, and it's it's three D, right? Like we're very dense, and it it comes to you know um, you know to live in this physical world that we live in, we have to have a human body right? A physical body that we take care of. So that is important, but we're evolving to, to life fulfillment. We're all questioning, is this all there is in life? And no, there isn't. There is your sole purpose. Unfortunately, it's not written on the palm of your hand where, where you say, oh, here's my soul's purpose. Here's what I'm supposed to be doing with my life to, to attain in, you know, love and joy and all those happy things, right? Like, what am I giving back to the world too? That's what you have to ask yourself. What, what is my purpose? What am I giving back? We all have to work to earn, you know, money to, to put shelter um, and food and, and provide that for our beings. But, but, but what is that one element that I'm missing? So I think it's really the daily questioning. The daily questions that you should ask yourself is, is um, you know, what am I doing for my soul today? Am I living in fear or am I living out of love? The energetic vibration. And there's two, that's all there is, two energetic vibrations. Fear is anger and tension and, and um, you know, all of the fear-based and, and, you know, angst that you feel during the day. And then am I living out of the love vibration, which is your higher being, your, your soul self, your happiness and joy and it's how we react to each other right so how are we reacting is this conversation based you know out of the positive or is it based out of the negative and you know society was built in in more of a survival mode and there was probably purposes to that but you and I don't have to go out and, and wonder what we're going to eat tonight right like we don't have to go out and find food you know forage through the forests or 
um, look for the, you know, um, the big, you know, meat source out there and, and drag home the carcass, if you will, <laughs> you know, um, we can go to our nearest fast food restaurant. I'm not advocating for that, obviously, but, you know, we don't have to live in survival mode anymore. And I think that will be a shift too. We can live in thrive mode. And that is a love-based, you know, energy, if you will. And and we shouldn't, we, we should want to live in that direction on a consistent basis, but somehow we've been kept in this survival mode. Yep. And I think that's because we've forgotten about the soul and soul health. And soul health will also begin our entry into the cellular structure of our being so we've got to penetrate our cellular structure so that we can evolve and thrive and how do you do that and it's you know through the tiniest of molecules so is a food source that goes in through your stomach then out to your cellular structure is that the best way to nourish our bodies that may be one element of it but what are you doing you know is it liquids is it sound is it uh you know even touch what are what what other ways are we nourishing our you know being through our soul and we just have to keep asking ourselves those types of questions and then doing the research and saying hmm that's interesting how about going to infuse my vitamins through ivs versus take them through a pill form which you know, a fraction of those enter into my bloodstream to support my being. So interesting, because I recently did start seeing um, uh, an alternative medicine doctor, and he does do the IVs, and he keeps yeah. up with everything. It's just interesting how yeah. uh, things are shifting over, yeah. over time and over the years. And, and I, yeah, I would say that is helping your soul being. Right. Is let's say you go and get an infusion, you're, you're penetrating at the cellular level versus the typical food digestion stomach organ. So I do talk about also it's organ health or your physical health. So your heart, your lungs, all your organs, your muscular structure, that is part of your physical being. And for the most part, you know, our society has studied that, right? And, and luckily in today's world, if, if we were to have a heart attack, it, we could go to the emergency room and get heart surgery, you know, that's evolved and that's great. Right. So our physical beings are really being taken care of and we've studied and, and I, I still think women's health needs to be studied, um, much, much more, but, um, for the most part that's happening. And then again, for our mental, our nervous system is being studied. Um, more and more and why haven't why hasn't the soul and even the the nervous system been studied because you physically you can't visualize it right if I say your heart you picture your heart mm -hmm. and for the most part most people would picture that in the same way so it's easy to get it out to the masses I'm trying to help take the invisible to the visible just what you say like your aura we couldn't have this conversation with a lot of people, right? And, you know, you mentioned colors. Most people wouldn't even begin to know what that would mean. Like, oh, you mean there's colors even around your aura? Yes, there are. And, and, and so I think we'll see more and more of that become mainstream as part of our health, our whole being, um, you know, uh, regiment, if you will, or daily routine. And uh, instead of just focused on activity, which, again, our society has been focused on, let's focus on, you know, restfulness and just quiet and, you know, time to ourselves versus being out there. Um, they used to call it the rat race, right, uh, or the hamster wheel and, and just going, 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 going. And so I think just taking, again, how to start would be just to take time and sit and ask yourself, do I think about my human being in three parts? 
And then those three parts are my physical, mental, soul. I've been taught about my physical and now my mental, but who's teaching me about my soul? What practitioners can I bring in? And I'm developing, um, you know, a, a soul collective, if you will. So part of my company will be introducing uh, a soul collective so that people have a resource to go to and to explore and to, um, you know, learn more about what tools that they can use um, for that. Love it. Love it. I actually found Dr. Kortkov. He was out of Russia and he okay. was he took Herlian photography to the next level. So he has machines, GDV technology that Dr. Joe Dispenza uses to measure the energy yep. field around you. And, and and we can now go and get body scans using yep. technology that's essentially what Herlian photography was picking up, but a, an advancement of it. So yes. I, yeah. You know, it, and it's, so, it's amazing. Yeah. And so let's say, you know, um, you just mentioned that and you found him, you know, but you're one of very few, right? A small percent of the population. Let's get it into the larger population. And as you know, again, just asking, oh, you went to the gym today. That's, That's great. No one would question that. Right. Right. So but if you said, oh, I wouldn't had my energy measured. <laughs> they'd be like, I'm sorry, what was that? Now, some would be curious. Right. And what I also start with is curiosity is so important in today's world. Be curious, mm -hmm. you know, not judgmental, but be curious. Curiosity would be on the love based, you know, energetic field versus the, you know, uh, fear based energetic field or survival thrive. So I try to break it down. It's one or the other, you know polarity negative positive and um that's also a, a way to start um and you know we're, we're human beings so and and we've been conditioned also from society to live certain ways and that's changing mm -hmm. that will um our society will look completely different structures are breaking down right now and our society will look completely different in um probably by 2060 Okay. So, um, again, start living through your energy and your energetic field. And how do you do that? Get some knowledge on what that truly means. Study, um, you know, um, the, the, the physics of it. Uh, you know, there's, there's, and that's why I call my company quantum, mm -hmm. you know, um, look at the quantum field. That's the energetic field, um, uh, quantum physics, quantum biology, so uh, start incorporating different words into your life, you know, start using those words, start asking your friends about those uh, topics and see what they hear about those topics and start those discussions. Again, we want to, we need to, you know, our society has always been evolving, right? Well, now, now it's time to take a great big leap. You know, we're, we're taking a huge quantum leap <laughs> And uh, we're going to live at a higher vibrating level. And even, you know, I read Tim Cook, um, you know, the CEO of Apple. He said, I don't measure time. I measure my energy. Yes. Yeah. And so let's not, you know, how do how, we break our day down in time? Why don't we break it down into energy? But we have to first learn about our energetic being, our soul being. And then what tools can we incorporate? But it's just really changing the language of how you look at, at, at things too. Exactly. It's such a, a paradigm shift, as you've said in, in your work. And yes, it's you know, a paradigm it's shift mm -hmm. all of us to do this. And yeah. even I've been interested in this field really since, since I watched my mom going through her job yeah. experience yeah. and then every Thursday night she would shut her bedroom door and she would be studying something. And, mm -hmm. and I would say, mom, what are you studying? And she would say, oh, it's for her Lomas test for, for insurance, like life insurance. She was trying to get to the next level with her job. Yep. And she took those tests and she was still studying on Thursday night. And I said, mom, what, what are you studying? And eventually she shared with me this box of materials that 
she was invited into this group. It's one of the secret societies that teaches all about this over, a, you know, you'd get it in the mail, a, a pamphlet in the mail it would come to the house. And eventually she had a box of this stuff. And she said, I want to give you this box. And, and you can't tell anybody because I'm not supposed to tell anybody. It's secret. And Sylvia Brown writes about these secret societies in a book. And, and the one mm -hmm. that my mom was studying is one of the ones she mentions in this book. But I have this box of stuff that goes back to Francis Bacon's days about how energy works in our body. And, and I don't think I can get through this in my lifetime. There's so much out there, but it was supposed to be a secret or not talked about. Do you do you know when, when you did your research, what did you uncover? Anything like this that some people got to study this material? Yeah, I, I, I think that, again, that was societal structure was to take it away from the mainstream, right? And give power to those that um, knew, again, if you want to call it secret, but secrets are, you know, under the fear-based paradigm, right? So that there, we need to get it out in the masses. There shouldn't be any fear of sharing that, right? Yeah. Why aren't we sharing more? In fact, I have, you know, let's say I do, you know, run across people that say they're spiritual or focus in on this, but they can't share what they're learning. Well, I don't want to associate with those people because that's a fear base. That's another thing I say is, you know, be very cognizant of the environment you put yourself in because you absorb that negative and the negative molecule is heavier than the positive. So um, back in the old sales days, you know, the, the story was the sales manager put his top performing sales guy with the lowest performer so that he could bring up the lowest performer, right? right. What happened over the course of six months? The yeah. top performer dropped down oh. to the level of the, of the worst performing. Why? Because a negative energy is much, much heavier then and that's physics right much heavier than the positive so that's why we need to we need to protect our energy if you will and so let's say you say oh yeah you know my group is negative or my workplace is negative well and I, i'm fine i'm positive and i come in all cheery and by the end of the day your energy is drained well that's because you're around the negativity even if you're not quote unquote participating in it your body is absorbing that. So I, I tell people they really can't afford to stay in that type of environment. And one of my tenants is your environment is critical. So start with your environment, live outside in, which is counterintuitive than what everyone is saying now inside out, but live outside in. So how is your environment structured? You know, what? What furniture, what colors, what sounds, what scents are you putting into your environment? It matters and it can uplift you at the cellular structure. So you could even be uplifting yourself in your environment. Let's say you go home, you have colors that energize you, right? Because colors are energy as well. And we all know that colors represent certain things. Blue is more calming. Red is more energizing. You know, what colors are you attracted to? You know, let's say that you got furniture from your grandma that didn't represent who you are. Well, one, it holds a negative energy too, maybe from grandma's suffering or survival right that couch still may hold some of that cellular memory if you will and and the color may not you know you come home and you have to sit on an old stained brown couch what is that going to do for you it's going to automatically bring you down whether you know it or not so you you cannot not afford to go out and buy a new couch and in today we have options you know we can buy you know the, uh, the the blue couch from, you know, uh, very minimal dollars to very high end dollars, <laughs> you know, you, you can buy the color you want or the texture you want. So get to know yourself through your senses. And I call it the sense to soul journey. So start with your senses. Again, all these principles are very basic. So it's not like, oh, wow, that's fascinating. That's a new word or a new term. Let's get back to the basics and look at a baby that's born. 
a baby only uses their senses. We learn about our senses in kindergarten and then we forget about them because they're automatic. But the senses are how we engage with our outside environment. So how are you engaging? How are you tuning into your senses? Let's say that you go out and the you hear a siren. What does your nervous system and your body automatically do? You tense up, right? So sound is important. Let's say the, you know, how we have the sound machines now that have the nature sounds or the white noise or the brown noise. Um, you know, those, you know, do some research on that. What how, calming effects does that have on you? Just keep it on in the background. So this can be, you know, little things that you don't even have to really do or think about, right? But you can, um, you know, they're in the background, but they are helping your being evolve and elevate and stay in that positive love vibration, if you will. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I went to, in one of my interviews, I interviewed Greg Link. He was the co-founder of um, Covey Link. He partnered with Stephen Covey. Oh, yeah. Yep. He wrote a bunch of books on trust, smart trust. And, and I went mm -hmm. to his house one day just to, to meet up with him and ask him some questions that I had that I really needed to see him in person for. And, and I go in his house and he's got spa music playing and he, he lived in mm -hmm. Sedona. So uh, outside the window, you could see the mountains and, and it was just beautiful. The feeling that he had created in his home was just like second to none. I've never felt a home like this. And ever since that day, I played spa music in the house, just, you know, found, found a station on Pandora and I play it through the speakers and it is just when you meet people that you know, he did really well in his corporate world, but then he had to step back and and embrace his spiritual side. And he, he addressed it and he said it was an important part of him. And and just seeing how other people live that have made that shift was important for me to start taking things from other people and, and sharing it on the podcast. Some some Yes. Time. And, so, and, it, and it's a little thing. It's right. Don't you don't have to start. And, and have everything all at once, right? Let's just start small and incorporate it into your daily life. Again, it's not going to happen overnight, but slowly you'll notice your energy change and you'll notice that you are tapping more into your soul being. And so let's, again, let's get it into the language of, you know, every day and let's, and let's focus on it as we put priorities on our physical and our mental health. We need to prioritize our soul health. Start with the senses. Start with, let's call it the sound machine that you can get on Amazon. Research that. Then you can even go deeper. You know, the Hertz levels, right? You know, the binarial beats. But even there's a difference between the binarial beats and the sulfurigrio beats, right? right? So learn more about that. And then, okay, let's say that you have the spa music, you know, what is the vibrational measurement of that? What is the energetic measurement of that? Because the love vibration has a certain Hertz level, you know, colors have a certain energetic vibration, you know, uh, human beings have a certain human vibration, mm -hmm. you know, um, so we can all measure that. But it, but but until those tools become more mainstream, let's start putting some of the the tools that we have into our homes and just know through our feeling of our being just like, oh, when you work out, do you go and measure your muscle tension? I mean, now we have we can measure BMI and, you know, certain levels of strength, but we don't have true measurement tools, right? You're not going to the doctor every day and having your blood drawn and saying, oh, my red blood cell count is now this, or, you know, my, my cholesterol is now this. We, we, we live our daily life and then we measure it at the end of, let's say the year, you know, don't do the short-term measurements. Let's, let's focus on the longer term, but let's do put short-term, you know, daily activities into our life. Now, I wondered about that because on my report for the aura reading, I 
got a, a reading of what Hertz level I was at. How do how do we know what Hertz level without getting an aura reading? Can are there other tools that I could measure day to day? Or you know, I think as you said, uh, there's some machines out there that measure the vibration, right? And 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 go into the Hertz level and the frequency of your being. But what I'm trying to teach people is you already intuitively know. Like, okay, let's say when you get a cold, you know, your body doesn't feel very good, right? right the energy is there. So slowly, and maybe you do look back and say, you know what, last month, I, if, if you could measure month to month and, and, and experience the exact same daily activities, which none of us do, because we, we walk out and maybe the, the barista at the Starbucks isn't friendly that day, you know, that can affect our energetic being right again i'm trying to get away from i guess real specifics and let's just start our practices right like we we can get because those tools aren't mainstream yet yeah right so i'm trying to stick to the mainstream tools so that that we we know that it's not difficult you know to in today's world just even getting like a doctor's appointment right <laughs> can, oh, yeah. Brutal. take months right the the systems are being stressed that's why i mean the systems are breaking down so whether it's the business the 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 medical the the government the the religious systems are all breaking down they were they were structured based on survival we're now structuring systems based on thrive so let's start looking at those systems and, and maybe the system isn't created yet, but guess what? There are some things that we can do right now to, to uplift our whole being, not just our physical being that we've been taught to do. Right. And, and I say, you know, like when I entered the workplace, you know, um, I grew up, you know, in a traditional family, you know, it, you know, went to college, but back then you were to go to college and find a husband, not get a degree and, and, and go into the workplace, or maybe you, uh, you know, the traditional role of a woman was nursing or teaching. Those were traditional roles. You didn't go into business or if you went into business, then you, you left when you found the husband and had kids right now in today's world, the woman has options. You don't have to be fit into that traditional role, that traditional role filled societal purposes for survival, right? But guess what? We 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 are more than just wanting to have children or have the support of a partner. We individually can contribute. What are you individually contributing? I think that for women is so important to ask ourselves away from being, whether it is you're a mom or you are a spouse or, you know, uh, you're, 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 um, involved in the traditional roles that society has built, what else are you contributing to society? And as more and more women get involved in, in, in fulfilling their sole purpose, I think that uh, society will evolve at a quicker rate. And also I think about my husband, I'm trying to, you know, share with him what I'm learning and he's open to this type of stuff, but, but also breaking down the barriers, um, for, for for men as well with, with getting in touch, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's there's just different levels. Just like I said, some people spiritually say, oh yeah, I'm spiritual. I go to church every day. Well, that, okay, so that can give you some, um, you know, meditation. Let's call that a meditation practice, right? Um, but that organization does not own your spirit, you know, you are a spirit. So what are you doing to fulfill your soul's purpose? Right. And are you getting to know your soul at a deep, deep level? So let's go deep. Um, that's another program. You know, how how deep are you going into knowing your soul self? And also I teach people if you think that's part of your your physical brain power, right? Our physical being. There's a difference between thinking and knowing. Knowing is coming out of your soul. Thinking is coming out of your analytical mind space, right? Mm -hmm. 
one plus one equals two. Well, guess what? Sometimes, again, what we've been taught, the logic and everything, logic, right, isn't going to work in today's new paradigm. But your knowing is living from your soul self. So how many times do you say, I knew that? Yes, I knew that was, you know, I knew I shouldn't have turned right. I should have turned left. And, you know, again, if we followed our knowing instead of our mind overriding our knowing, which it can do on a daily, hourly basis, go with your knowing. That's, again, in corporate America, you know, uh, what are the analytics behind it? And, And yes, those play a role. But then also your knowing plays a role too, you know, and it can later be back by, wow, Pam, how did you know that was going to end up that way? I, I just knew, you know, like you, again, it's the invisible, it's the collective wisdom of your being. So let's start listening to the collective wisdom of our being. And that starts in your soul. Pam, this is all so good. Yeah. Sense to soul. Let's start the journey today. Yeah. Yeah. um, You've painted quite the picture of, you know, the, what you see for the future. So that was one of my questions, but you've painted it. I don't need to ask you that. Um, You, you see soul health is something that we talk about just as openly as our mental and physical health. And, and, and I do as well. I'd love to be able to talk about the soul and, and this side of myself more often, it's just something that I know I've always left out. So I'd, I'd like to be able to talk about, you know, I feel my energy level shifting and in certain interviews, I light up and I feel the connection. It's so obvious. I can't deny it. There's something, um, in between us, especially when you're mm-hmm. collaborating, your your energy levels go up and down. I, I can't read colors either, but I feel the, mm-hmm. the energy between people. And I, I'm sure we all can if we mm-hmm. sense. Well, I can feel when I'm stuck and then I'm just starting to learn what tools can I use now that help me to just keep that connection open. So it, if by the end of the day, I'm tired instead of you know, grabbing a cup of coffee, what else can I do? Maybe nutrition based, um, you know, different things. Like, uh, have I missed anything? What What do you think that you would say at the end here for someone new without, you know, you know, just starting out? What What do you think we should, where should we begin with where we are with this? I would begin with your environment. So take a look at your home environment and the physical, you know, the chairs, the couch, the, the colors and all of that, because that's tangible, right? That's right. So let's take a look at the tangible. How does that color? How does that texture again, back to the senses? So instead of analyzing it from maybe a traditional perspective, a functional use of a chair, let's say it's used to sit, what's the difference between whether it's brown or blue, well, it is important whether it's brown or blue. Yes, it's important that it's structured and it's, you know, the leg's not broken. So when you sit on it, it falls apart and then you, you know, that's not comfortable. But it, 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 it is the color resonating with you. And what then let's say that it's not. And then is there a simple thing that I can do to change that, right? And um, I think there, you know, the answer that would be, yes, there is. I can either remove the chair and let's say that it is a brown chair and it's not, you know, you've never liked it. Just it was a functional chair. You needed a chair there. Someone gave it to you. Then take it out of the room and see how you feel. I'm constantly moving the furniture around. It sh- it shifts the energy. Oh. So then, but it, it's the asking of those questions. So start noticing. That would probably be my uh, first thing that I would tell people. Start noticing what's around you and how you feel. And whether it's, okay, I go to this um, Starbucks versus this other Starbucks around the block. Oh. Is there a difference? Even though, again, they're the same brand, same coffee, but it's the you know, whether it's the, uh, the the street corner they're on, the noise level, 
whether it's the type of people that enter, whether it's the, the barista that has the positive attitude, what makes your energy uplift instead of tense up? So when is your body tense and when is it relaxed? And see, we don't notice the joy typically, right? We always notice the tension. Like that's, you know, they say to, you know, the um, health wise, right? We always wait until it's a, a you know, emergency. Right. Okay. Sure. <laughs> well, you know, why aren't we being proactive and ensuring that our health is functional, right? At all times. And it's, it's, I don't know whether it is human nature or whether society has just conditioned us to wait until we have an ache or pain and, and break a bone to go to the doctor, but analyze that on a daily basis. You know, how is my body feeling? How is my mental health today? And more importantly, how is my soul, my energetic being? Let's ask ourselves, how is my energetic being? And let's start relating that to your soul being. And let's start looking at your body, your human being in three areas, body, mind, and soul. Body, mind, and soul. So if you have a checklist, let's add soul to that checklist. Pam, this has been so helpful. Thank you. This is timely for me, just looking at a soul side and, and wondering yeah. you know, where do you even begin to talk about this? If if people are look are listening to this and they think, you know, well, what what kind of services do you provide? Can you just give an overview if they go to your website? Yeah. So it, it, yeah. you can go to my website, um, the quantum sense. Um, and but that is more the consulting, the business side of it. Um, I, I um, uh, do primarily consult with businesses versus individuals. So there's not a lot of resources yet uh, on there. So I'm be adding more of those resources as far as just checklists and, and things like that. But um, um, you can go and just and start thinking about, you know, uh, what am I doing in the quantum? What am I doing? in you know, what is my energy level? Maybe it's as simple as, um, you know, how's my energy today? Instead of saying, I need to go to the gym to increase or grab a cup of coffee, what else do I need to do? I need to look at the energy and, and, and sense my environment right here, right now. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to do. Wow. This is good. Grand Elevate Evolve is my program. Say it again. Sorry, one more time. Ground Elevate Evolve. Wow. So let's start with grounding. Let's just start with grounding. This is helpful. Pam, I want to thank you so much for speaking. Well, no, me. I want to thank you for having me on your podcast. And I hope your audience did get just even a little tidbit of information that they can use and, and definitely just start exploring, right? Just start exploring and, and um, you know, talking about it with your friends. I guess that's what I would ask is just start exploring the topic and talking about it with your friends. What are you doing for your soul today? Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll put all the links in the show notes for people to reach out. And if they want to ask you questions or have a look at your website. And, and I just want to thank you because you've added credibility to this area with your background. You know, that's why when I saw you, I thought, wow, I would love to talk about this, but I've, I've not talked about it because it, it just hasn't gone over well in the corporate world, but you have put your foot down that, that this is the direction you're going with your background. So, you know, mm -hmm. I want to just thank you for, you know, the experience you bring to this, adding the credibility, helping us to all look at this side of our health, our soul health. Thank you so much, Pam. You're welcome. Thank you again.